Okay, for this morning's demonstration, what I want to do is establish the light and dark side of a form. But the first thing we have to do is get the form laid out. And so what I did was I took some measurements uh, using my pencil, and what I found was that with the toilet paper rolls, the bottom right is um, <clears throat> going to be halfway, the, the size of the toilet paper roll on the right is, is half the distance across the uh, forms, and then if you take that same measurement and went up with it, it's uh, the same, if you take two of that measurement across, that's the full scene, and two up, it's the scene. So basically what I found out was if I split this in half, okay, and I split it in half this way, then I take a measurement here, okay, and then take that measurement this way, then take it up, Okay, so it goes all the way down to here, to here, and then from there up to here. So it's going to take up that space. I want to make sure that it was contained within the, the drawing space. <coughs> so from there, um, I take a measurement. I'm going to see what the distance is. Okay, so it's about this much. I get the outside. Now, when you're dealing with uh, tubes, the outside uh, is going to be vertical. Okay, so the line out here is vertical. So that sets the parameter for the first toilet paper roll. And then this is about the distance from the bottom to here. So you, you want to take some measurements to get you know, the basics set up. <coughs> so uh, also, I'm going to take a measurement here. So the distance here is almost the, the distance to the top. So this is just going to go slightly above there. And then I have to find approximate center of this tube, and I set the center. And you want I do that so that I know where I want the transition point. Uh, now this one's slightly oddly shaped, so it's not going to be perfect. You know, it's going to start about here, and it's going to roll down, literally, <laughs> and then it's going to kind of roll, go up, uh, and it's going to stop because it's going to run into the next toilet paper roll, and then it's going to come over this way and kind of arc across that way. Again, it's going to stop where it hits this other toilet paper roll. Uh, now, the, the shape down here should echo the shapes that are up here. So that's why it's important to get this kind of laid out first and come down here. And, you know, again, this goes up quite a ways. And I'm just going to kind of lay out where that shape is going to transition. Okay, so that sets up the first toilet paper roll. Um, Make sure you can see that I'm going to lay it out a little bit darker than I normally would. All right, get this one. All right, so that's the first shape kind of set in there. And then I want to get the second shape. Now, the second shape is basically, if I take the negative space between here and here, set that in, then it's going to be from this point to out here, okay? And so I'm going to set that. And you'll notice that the space uh, in the photograph, it actually angles in. Now, that's only because of the distortion with the camera, so I'm not really going to draw it that way. I'm going to draw it more straight down the way you'd normally see it with your eyes. And then I'm going to look at the space here and see how much this rises up uh, to set the second one. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to look at this part here, set the curve of the bottom one here because it's actually almost going to be easier to set this bottom one than the, um, the top part of the toilet paper roll in that particular one because I'm dealing with this sitting on top of it. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to get this was the measurement uh, from here to here is the same as the toilet paper roll on the top. Let me double check that again. Yeah, I'm actually working off a picture um, set up that looks like the picture that you're doing. I uh, normally be working from a live toilet paper roll, but for this demonstration, I'm faking it. So, and I can take this and move it up here, and I can establish where this rises up. Let's see, let's set this center of this roll, and this rises up. And so, it's going to be, if I take that measurement again, it's going to be about here. Okay, so there to there. You want to always want to have a, a pretty good sense of the proportions of what you're working with. 
Okay, so then, again, I want to see how far the width of that goes to the height. And so the width of this is almost to the height. Can't go too tall because this is going to end up above it. All right. And so, so again, if I kind of set where center is, even on this, um, and this is slightly off center probably from the center of the, the design. Not much though. It literally is almost setting right in center. Uh, so let's get this shape. This is a little distorted at the top. Comes down. Kind of angles this way. Angles across that way. I want to kind of get the direction of the form first. Okay, so no, not quite rounded enough. All right, and again, I want it for this particular drawing. I'm not going to be too too particular about getting this these shapes exactly perfect. I'm just going to try and because what I'm looking at is a slightly distorted image anyways because of the the fact that I was using a camera to take the picture instead of actually just looking at the toilet paper roll. Okay, so I'm going to set the center of this guy. So, <laughs> okay, so putting that in there, and yeah, you can see that relatively well. And I'm using just a normal 2B pencil because uh, if you're stuck in the um, studio or in the, in the cafeteria today, you're, you're not going to be able to get a hold of drawing pencils. We'll establish the top side of this one. Again, it should echo the bottom side within reason. These have been slightly squished, so it's distorting the normal proportions. And I kind of set center on here too to get the center of where this roll would be. And you're seeing the whole thing, so it has to be small enough to fit there. Okay, and this may have been drawn a little too big. Okay. This is actually a bit crushed. Okay, so now got the general shapes seems a little fuzzy on the representation on the screen let's see that's about as focused as it's going to get okay so now what i want to do is establish you know basically the light and darks of this image and the way you do that is you squint and you look at it and you determine you know with this where the break is between the light and the dark side here it's going to be about here over here, it's going to be slightly off to the right. Uh, this is clearly all in the dark. There's a shadow coming from the bottom of this, going across here. Uh, everything to the outside is dark. Everything to the outside of, of all this is dark. This has a break between the light and dark side. Now you go, you know, it's slightly darker in here, but this is darker more to this side. This has a small area where you can kind of see light hitting right here. This is all in shadow. This whole section here is primarily in shadow. There's a little bit of light hitting on that side of it. You know, so you could honestly say that this kind of is an area over here where it's almost on the light side and then up here again where it goes to the dark side. Now, the key to these particular shapes and the reason I've used these for this project is because it has two types of transitions between the light and dark side. Uh, and they kind of emulate the, the basic two choices you normally have when you're looking at form. There's either a hard turn of uh, form from the light side to the dark side, like there is, and, and this plane right here is the light side, and then it shifts hard to the dark side. Or there's a soft turn of form because it's a rounded shape, and you're having a, uh, the light side, and then it transitions um, softly from the light side to the dark side, and then you also hear you have a core value where it's the darkest right off the edge. And for things that are rounded, that gives you that rounding shape. And then there's some reflective light that's uh, bouncing off of this toilet paper on here. You know, and there's a little bit of uh, atmospheric light of, of things bouncing back on this side. Not so much because uh, when you have a white shape sitting next to this, it's actually creating a lot of bounce light back here. But that's still on the dark side. So the values in here have to be at least probably three values darker than the light side on a white form. And same thing with this here, you have a darker space, but you still have to be you know, at least uh, three shades lighter here than they would be here. Um, so 
we're going to focus on that. And I'm going to ask to establish really quickly. That's the main thing to do is establish very quickly, you know, what areas are dark and what areas are light. So I'm going to just really quickly lay down a tone just with fairly straight um, strokes. These are hatching marks and I'm just laying them down pretty consistently in one direction and slightly using the side of my pencil to fill it in a little quicker. And I'm going to take the edge, okay, I'm going to create an edge there and then work off of it. Because it really is important when you have a hard transition to create a hard edge that you then work off of. Okay, so for that whole area there, I'm going to pull it down. And again, I'm doing this with a 2B pencil. It'll, it'll give me enough value to establish the light and darks. Um, I won't be able to pull down the darks as much as I'd like to with a, a 6B, 4B, something like that that's going to give me a softer lead and allow me to pull the values down quicker um, and create greater contrast. But in the end, you know, you work with what you have and you get what contrast you can out of the materials you're working with. Okay, so I'm not really doing the background yet, but I will touch on it briefly here in a second. Um, I just want to establish just the basic light and dark side of the shapes that I'm working with, the toilet paper rolls. Okay, so again, here there's a hard edge. You want to make sure there's a hard edge. All right, um, pull that now. But here there's a soft edge, so I want to keep this kind of soft. All right, I don't want, you notice I'm not trying to come up to a hard edge. Then I'm coming back a little bit. Changing direction slightly. When you do that, you fill in some of the gaps. Okay, and then we'll carry that value all the way back. And really towards the back end of this toilet paper roll, there's almost a lost edge where the dark side of the toilet paper roll, you know, kind of connects to the dark side of the spaces around it. I'm not going to, for this demonstration, I'm not going to go too much into that. But I'm pulling this core value area down just slightly um, and trying to keep it as, and you can do almost more of a rounded shading right here to kind of build that tone up. Okay, so, so again, now I have the light side here and it starts to transition to the dark side, but I'm keeping that transition a little bit soft, all right? Whereas here, on this edge, I'm going to really tighten that edge up because the darkest point is right at this dark edge, okay, the, the edge of the dark side. And the lightest point is on the direct opposite of that right there, where on the light side, that's going to appear slightly whiter and brighter than anywhere else on the form, except for possibly a highlight. Okay, so you can already see how that darker edge is pushing this plane down <coughs> and lifting that plane up, right? So... <clears throat> do the same thing over here. I'm going to knock this down. And I'm not going back into the shadow area here, and I probably should at this point. Um, I'm going to pull that down. That's, that's actually going to be a very dark area in there. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to get a little bit of it because there's a shadow and it stops right there. So I'm going to stop that where the shadow is. And again, uh, this is going to be the darkest point where there is no light right at that bottom edge. Okay. And also in here, it's going to get very dark. You know, so I'm just tightening that edge up and probably not the smartest move there. I went a little too sharp in my transition into hatching because when you're hatching, basically you're laying down lines, whether it's a soft fuzzy line or, or, line and if you change direction too much it's very hard to soften it up again okay so like I said not my best move in this drawing I'll tighten up that edge so again pull that area down because that would be the darkest point uh, in this drawing and if I had time to actually pull all the values all the way down I would be doing this around a lot of this, but I'm just gonna kinda cut it at the edges here in a minute. Okay, so so again, you want that hard edge there because even when I pull this value down over here, you know, this edge up here, again, is gonna be hard.
okay, because there's a hard transition between the light side and the dark side, but then on where the toilet paper rounds and you're shifting softly from the plane in the front that's facing the light to the side plane to the back plane, um, you want to create that sense of rounding and, and the way you do that, and also let me see, oddly enough, this is darker up here uh, than the back of the toilet paper roll because of the reflected light down there. You know, so this, this hard edge right here carries down and actually carries across here. You know, so again, this kind of stuff takes a little bit of time to pull off because you've got to start building subtle values. Um, but the only reason you can lay it out really quickly, this, this drawing, well, you'll see, just to get the gist of it, probably takes about 15 minutes, maybe a little longer, we'll see. All right, so, so again, I started pulling this value down. I realized I couldn't take it down too dark because I don't want to go darker than what's up there. So I'm going to pull these values down across here. And again, where I'm ending here, I'm going to keep that soft. I'm not going to create a hard edge there. I want to keep that soft. Pull that down. Okay, and then continually pulling these lines of um, hatching across. Now, I've seen some people in class already start using things like brushes and stuff to soften this up. And you can do that. You know, that, that's certainly a technique you can use. Uh, depending on how soft your graphite is, it works better if it's softer graphite or charcoal. Um, but uh, for this, it's also good to get control of just where you're placing your tone. Okay, and so as long as you're doing this by slightly changing the edge, again, sometimes you can round the way you're laying down your tone. You just want this core transition here. You're going from light to dark to darker, and then back to dark, but not quite as dark. And again, this would take a few minutes to, to build up. I want to get, get the general lights and darks down first. Okay, so you've got your light side, your dark side, light side, dark side. Um, and, and even this here, there's, there's a darker local tone because of that paper in there. So I'm going to establish that slightly darker. And, and again, these edges right here, they're going to be hard edges. All right, so that's going to be a hard edge in here. All right, and clearly inside here, this is going to be one of those areas that goes really dark. And there is a slightly light area right at the edge of that. And so there's actually a line that runs around it. So let me establish that. And then, you know, go a little bit darker with that area. So, working with what you have, you know, you, you, no matter where you are, what you're working with, you just work with what you have and, and do what you can with it. But if you understand the basics of establishing tonal contrast within the value range that you can work with, um, you can still create very convincing drawings with limited resources and basically crappy materials. Like right now, I'm working on typing paper just so you have a sense of, you know, I'm not working with good drawing paper uh, or anything on this. So I want to establish a little bit harder edge right here at the transition between the light side and the dark side. So just that little bit of transition right there, if you create a little bit of a harder edge and have it fade away, don't draw a hard edge. Don't, don't do this and lay down a line and then, you know, just shade like that away from it. This line has to fade into the plane to connect to it. Okay, so you have to take that edge and fade it back into the space. And so then you don't have to take the whole area all the way down. If you just take that edge down, um, that edge where there's the transition from the light side to the dark side, then you get the effects of going darker without having to go that much darker. You know, then if the light side, I'm going to use my eraser here, uh, if the light side has to be crisp right at that point. So that's where sometimes it helps to come back and use an eraser and make that pop a little bit. Okay. So again, you can see already where, you know, these values are really helping the, the form come alive. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more value right here. Again, this is going to be the darkest point out here. So, so yeah, you could actually hit a dark edge there and then just fade it away and you create the impression that the background's dark. 
same thing here. You know, we're going to create a dark edge and then just fade it out. Um, I don't have time to render in that whole background. And if you're doing a sketch, you won't. So if you just do that, where you kind of create the sense that the background is a darker space and, and you're, you're going to kind of just work back off of it. So the reason I did that is I want to know, you know, how dark this is out there. And if that's my darkest dark, at least for the moment, um, then I can only go so dark in here. Uh, this thing here has to go all the way to dark. And under here, um, this is really dark at that edge too. So literally this, this kind of just comes in this way. And then it, again, that dark edge fades out into this sh shadow because the shadow has to be lighter than that darker point there. So carry that shadow out. And though it does appear really dark right at, particularly at this edge right here. So I can take that darker and that darkness and kind of fade that back into here. Okay. And I'm trying to look at this. This area here probably should be slightly in shadow so it's not a perfectly highlighted area so i need to take it down just a little bit and then i want to come out here again establish that darker background by simply putting a line in here again i'm not going to do the whole thing i just want to give you a sense of how that can really change the way the space feels by just adding a little bit of darker tone at the edge of this and then again just kind of fading it out sketching it out like that to you know, give you a sense of how that's going to work okay so um, I didn't really push the values down in here as much as I need to I need to put that core value back in here I need to establish that it's going to be darker at this bottom edge same thing over here and again it'll be darker out here I don't have time to really get into all that I just want to establish how that's gonna work okay and you see how just by setting those edges you know, out here this is gonna to go to dark but so is all of this eventually now Clearly, this is going to take a little bit more time to actually, you know, finish the whole drawing. Quite a bit more time to really pull all the values down and really make it uh, an expressive, expressive composition. But this sort of sets the basics of what you might be able to do uh, sitting in the cafeteria, looking at what I'm looking at, uh, and then starting to establish the light and dark side. So you have to establish, you know, your basic shapes first. Okay. So, so again, the, the trick to doing a tube is if you set center, okay, you set the outside, um, center the upper, the top of the, the tube, and then establish how far it goes down and top off of center, and then you can just kind of round down your shape, and, and always kind of round out from your edges out here, and then like that. Then this space here, you bring the line down here, the center line, where the outside starts here and here, and you can take this distance, add it down here. You can very easily create a tube. Okay, so you have to establish the basic center, center, sides, and then set the arc, you know, from the outside to the, the, to the bottom, the outside to the top. Then down here, set the space just should be slightly greater from here to here than this from here to here. Okay, and so then once you have that, you can round it down, round it down. Okay, so that's, that's what we're doing today, all right? So I'm going to end this for now.